Hey, what's up, everybody? Good to see you. Um, thanks for joining in on my on my uh, video log. And today I'm going to talk about a couple of different things. Let me just adjust my camera really quick. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, the bigger picture. Um, I think sometimes Christians or conservatives are often told when we're when we're discussing issues or policies or uh, problems that we see or differences or dissents, um, we're told that we're missing the bigger picture. Uh, I've been told that before when I said that I was not going to vote uh, for the Democratic Party. Um, so basically when I was, when I, I grew up as a Democrat and a liberal and, uh, you know, just about a year and a half ago changed my position. <clears throat> Um, and so what this, this is kind of what happened with me. I was very, um, I was very pro like social justice. I was, I was, you know, kind of shaped to think in that way. Uh, and I had a mentor who, who talked to me. He was a Christian, but he was also a Republican and I was a Christian and I was a Democrat and he would bring up politics, and I didn't really like it uh, because I didn't see it as being a part of understanding Christianity. It wasn't. It wasn't a piece of Christianity. It was being political, and I thought that was kind of immoral to to think of politics as being something that we should really be interested in in Christianity. And so what he did was he kind of poked at some, like he, when I would bring something up, he would press me on the issue a little bit and he would press and press and press and press until I was triggered. And then he would back off and retreat. Uh, and then, but usually it wasn't like him bringing up the subjects. It was me saying something like, Oh, I hate Donald Trump. Right. Well, why? You know, it's a fair question. Why do you hate him? Oh, uh, because he's a misogynist. And, well, what do you do that was misogynistic? Oh, well, he said, you know, I'm going to grab women, etc. You probably know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, well, you know, did you know he said that in the 90s? Actually, I can't remember. So just basically, I would, I would be pressed on certain things that I said, and my, my assumptions were challenged and until I was triggered, and then he would retreat and, and come back. And eventually, I, I think that was one of the catalysts for me of realizing, like, when he would when he would talk to me about some of the double standards on the left and some of the things that the Democratic Party would do, that was the catalyst for me to say, not that I'm going to vote Republican, but that I'm going to no longer vote for the Democratic Party unless, like, there would have to be a serious uh, shift in a certain politician's um, policies or philosophy on the Democratic side because I, I think that liberalism has a lot of positive things in it as it was once understood um and I, I would see a lot of my values as lining up in that direction uh and but there would have to be a, a serious shift in the uh the overarching philosophy of a certain politician or of the democratic party in order for me to vote that way and so i was convinced that i wasn't going to vote that way um <clears throat> And, and so I ended up, um, you know, just kind of considering that, but still, you know, not willing to kind of dive in and, and really, um, you know, commit to one side or the other. Uh, abortion and a pro-life position was a big part of my, was a big part of my uh, decision not to vote for the Democratic Party, but eventually... I realized that I had I it wasn't just that I couldn't vote for them but that I was obliged to vote against them um, and that was that was something that I had to come a conclusion that I had to come to on my own it wasn't anything where somebody sat me down and said hey I'm gonna shift your political position you better listen to everything that I say uh, it wasn't anything like that uh, it was like I had to have my eyes open, and I had to come to um, an understanding. My hair is kind of messed up. I always do this in my videos, but uh, there we go.
so I had to kind of shape and come to my own understanding. And some of that was not easy. Um, it was, some of it challenged me and to the point of being angry. And, but eventually uh, I shifted all together and came to the conservative side. And this was, like I said, after I became a Christian. Um, and so that's something that I need to realize too, because I oftentimes want to explain everything. And I think that I know more than I do. But uh, when I, and so when I explain things to people, I have to remember that myself, like m the people who explain things to me and helped me to, to see facts and, and see the truth of what was happening. Uh, that wasn't, they, they were largely to thank for my, my shift uh, in, in the political philosophy, but it wasn't because of them. They didn't do it for me. I had to, it's like, it's like when you're arguing with somebody or debating with somebody, it's not like, like how often do they say, oh, you know, I agree with you. I'm changing my entire belief. Like that's very rare. Um, but sometimes when you're having a discussion with somebody, what you say might be a catalyst for them to go and do some investigation on their own. Maybe something you said about Jesus or about atheism causes the person to go and investigate more and, and, and to come to their own conclusions. And so that's a good thing. That's just a part of learning and growing. And I think that that was, uh, that was kind of the preface to what I really wanted to talk about, which was the bigger picture. Um, so we're often told that we're missing the bigger picture. And so let's see, like, what did I, what did I just talk about? I talked about how I had to, I had to come to the understanding on my own. It wasn't that I had somebody who was really smart sit me down and, and talk to me. Although that did happen. It was like, I had to be like, whoa, you know, what's going on here? And I guess some people call that like a red pill moment. Uh, <clears throat> so the bigger picture is basically the idea, um, this is gonna be very controversial, but I think it needs to be addressed. The idea that humanity has uh, been evolving for so long, 2.8 million years now, um, and has come to dominate every aspect of the planet. And the only reason that Homo sapiens was able to dispel all the other species of the genus Homo, uh, like Homo neanderthal, um, Homo erectus, I think, um, and, and dispel all these other uh, species from the genus Homo and become the, the uh, main uh, dominators of everything, societies, nations, um, other species. We've come to dominate the world because of our superior brain function and our superior ability to um, construct and tell fictions, myths, and narratives in order to bring people together and band people together. So obviously in this bigger picture, there's no God, right? There's no uh, structure or order to anything. Everything has emerged from uh, a chaos and that's how humanity itself has emerged it's as a part of this chaos. But if you really think about that, humanity coming to dominate everything through fictions and narratives, everything, including all of the institutions, our homes, our idea of family, our idea of uh, morality, and everything is a part of that construct, as a part of that mythology. And everything that is a part of a mythology is in effect a part of the reasons why we've had wars, the reasons why we're pushing our world towards ecological catastrophe, and uh, the reason why nations fight against other nations, the, re the reason why people hate their neighbors, why people hate each other, that's all um, a symptom of Homo sapiens superior ability to not only build things um, and to uh, participate in industry, but our ability to construct narratives such as capitalism, such as communism, such as Buddhism, such as Islam, such as Christianity, 
um, usually the people who are looking at the bigger picture view are um, predominantly seeing Christianity as the main the main problem um, as and, and I really do think that is the case uh, Christianity seems to be the the main underlying philosophy that has driven this Western colonialist capitalist society uh, the idea of fundamental rights the idea of being created in God's image the idea of actually having ownership actually owning things and being able to trade freely in a free society um, those all go back to biblical ideas and and precepts uh, so but but it with the bigger picture in mind those things are just myths there's there can be no such thing as ownership because how can a person own a thing how can the word own even be a thing it's just a it's just an idea right just as america itself is just an idea or a set of ideas um, kind of constructed as a fabric that rest like a blanket over this land mass. So America, or any nation for that matter, and the principles that constitute nations are just mythologies. Um, they're just vague abstractions that we as homo sapiens have come up with in order to make sense of the world around us. And so coming from that viewpoint, it makes sense that um, a government that is run with um, the, the notion of the bigger picture and the greater good and seeing people in their notions of rights and freedoms as not really um, being able to take care of themselves or being able to understand the bigger picture as it's sanctioned by the state and by the medium, media, um, our inability to understand those things merit um, or give, excuse me, our inability to understand those things justify our ownership by those who would seek to control us in order to help us to um, fit in with the new social vision in accordance with this bigger picture mindset. So the bigger picture is an omniscience or it's a proposed omniscience of the the new secularized pluralized and privatized culture that all seek to um to overthrow the notions of the old the notions of religion the notions of these chains that bind us as humans so that we can break free from these chains and move forward into the new version of humanity that's going to take some things, it's gonna take some measures that may seem like us in America nowadays to be restricting our basic human liberties, restricting our rights, but overall, it's for the greater good. And so that's my idea of uh, the bigger picture and the way some people see themselves as being representatives of the bigger picture. So thanks for watching.